Major breaking news, the final submission to the United States Supreme Court has been made by the plaintiffs, by the petitioners in the Snope case dealing with whether or not the U.S. Supreme Court will take this case dealing with the AR-15 semi-automatic rifle ban out of the state of Maryland. This is the most important thing that we in the Second Amendment community are cheering for. Number one was the election of Donald Trump. Number two was the confirmation of a Republican-controlled Senate, both of which has occurred. Now we just need the Supreme Court to take the Snope case in late December, early January of this year, and we will have hit the trifecta for our gun rights. Let's break it down when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of the brand new law review article in the Georgetown Journal of Law and Public Policy entitled Dangerous But Not Unusual, Mistakes Commonly Made by Courts in Second Amendment Litigations, Post Bruin. 65 pages of scholarship, history, analysis, a lot of things we talk about on this channel are set forth there with a lot of historical citations and information that you can use to fight for our rights. Keep in mind that this is an article that will likely be cited by many courts, historians, and scholars moving forward. So make sure you get a copy. It's totally free. You can just download it from clicking on the link in the description of this video. No big deal. Uh, I think it's you know just up on the website of the Georgetown School of Law. All right, folks. So here we are. This is the last step before the United States Supreme Court takes over in the Snope versus Brown case arising out of the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit in Maryland, Virginia. This is the case dealing with a challenge, a Second Amendment challenge, to Maryland's assault weapon ban, which is really just a ban on types of semi-automatic rifles, AR-15s and the like. This is up before the U.S. Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has to decide whether or not to grant cert which means whether or not they're going to hear this case. The Supreme Court only hears somewhere between 60 and 70 total cases a year. So we really want them and hope that they will take this case. Uh, Maryland's argument is there is no circuit split here, but as we've talked about, there is no way to get a circuit split because these gun bans only occur in the nutty, anti-gun, deep blue states. So you never have, let's say, a Texas judge ruling on an AR-15 ban case because there's no AR-15 bans to challenge in the state of Texas, and that's a good thing. So what arguments were being advanced in this reply brief, which I'll put a link to it down below by uh, David Snope and his lawyers as to why the Supreme Court should grant uh, cert, why they should hear this case right here and right now. Let's check it out. The first thing they point out, this is a good case for the court to finally resolve an easy case, which really is an easy case, that because AR-15s and semi-automatic rifles are commonly owned by Americans for lawful purposes, they cannot be banned. Here's what the brief says. This case presents a well-established and long-running dispute under this court's Second Amendment case law. When is it permissible for a state to ban certain types of firearms? Maryland has argued that this dispute is just beginning to take shape following this court's decision in Bruin, and that additional time is necessary to allow the parties and the courts to develop a legal arguments or legal arguments associated with Bruin's application to assault weapon bans. Nothing could be further from the truth. Of course, this is true because these bans on AR-15s have been around for many, many years, and the operative case law is actually not Bruin. The operative case is the 2008 decision in Heller, which struck down the District of Columbia's ban on handguns. Why? Because handguns were commonly owned by Americans for lawful purposes and thus cannot be banned under the Second Amendment. But this brief goes on and continues another powerful argument by saying the following. 30 years ago, this court described the semi-automatic AR-15 rifle as a civilian commonplace generally available and traditionally lawful firearm. They cite to the Staples case, as well they should. 16 years ago, this court confirmed that the Second Amendment protects the right of individual citizens to possess firearms that are in common use for lawful purposes, citing to Heller, which is correct. In the intervening 16 years, semi-automatic rifles have continued to be commonly available, signed to Judge Sotomayor, or Justice Sotomayor, dissenting in Garland v. Cargill. And then they go on to say, And the AR-15 today is one of the most popular firearms in the United States, signed to none other than the ATF itself. This, therefore, should be an easy case. The Second Amendment protects common firearms. Semi-automatic rifles like the AR-15 are among the most common firearms in the nation. Therefore, bans on semi-automatic rifles like the AR-15 violate the 
Second Amendment. And then the brief goes on to point out that guess what? Guess what? As we've talked about on this channel, all these blue state courts uphold blue state gun bans because the politicians that get most of these judges on these blue state courts are people like Chuck Schumer or blue state senators. Just the way it is. That's how you get through in most instances to be a federal judge in the state of New York. You have to get the blessing of two Democratic senators, Chuck Schumer and Kristen Gildenbrand, both of whom, of course, are anti-gun liberals. So the brief goes on to point this out as follows. Remarkably, every circuit to confront the question about AR-15 bans has somehow held that whatever the test for protected arms should be, it should not be the common use test prescribed by Heller and confirmed by Bruin. To be sure, some of these courts relied on the intermediate scrutiny test rejected by Bruin, but many have not. In casting about for some way to, sus to sustain bans on common arms, courts have concluded that arms can be banned if they are in the court's estimation, particularly capable of unprecedented lethality, ill-suited, disproportionate to self-defense, or predominantly useful in military service. Exactly right. The reality is you've got a bunch of anti-gun courts across this country that when confronted with a gun ban, rather than applying the Supreme Court's decision in Heller and ruling against it, which is a very easy decision, they just make stuff up all in the name of advancing gun control. They're progressive, crazy liberal judges who have no interest in respecting the Second Amendment. And it's absolutely terrible, and it kills respect for the rule of law and respect for the Constitution. And this brief by the lawyers on behalf of David Snope in this case before the U.S. Supreme Court makes that very point as follows. The brief basically argues that the Supreme Court's intervention is particularly important because in the ongoing debate below, the side that to date has always prevailed, always prevailed, is also the side that is flouting this court's clear teaching in Heller. This error results in an ongoing infringement of the fundamental right to keep and bear arms in the states that have made the most popular rifle in America illegal. It also has created a doctrinal mess with far-reaching effects as courts do violence to the Bruin analytical framework to justify what should be unjustifiable. Powerful language. And then the brief goes on to point out exactly what Heller stood for. And you all being the smartest people in the room who follow this channel know exactly what I'm about to say. Four powerful holdings in the 2008 Supreme Court decision of Heller. That's right, not Bruin. Heller, which governs arms ban cases, which I've talked about repeatedly, including in the Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy, discussing how the lower courts are trying to pretend that Heller is not the law of the land, and that is absolutely hooey. Here's what the brief says, essentially making the argument that I've talked about before. The brief argues that Heller had four, Heller had four increasingly specific holdings that built on each other and should govern courts in resolving challenges to bans on types of firearms. Those holdings were in order, number one, there is in general an individual right to keep and bear arms. Number two, exceptions to that right depend on the history and tradition of gun regulations. Point number three, there is no history and tradition of banning arms in common use for lawful purposes. And number four, handguns cannot be categorically banned precisely because they are in common use for lawful purposes. Powerful language there. And of course, based on those holdings in Heller, if you apply the rule of that you cannot ban, you cannot ban arms that are in common use by Americans today for lawful purposes, you simply cannot ban those. And you take the AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, the most popular rifle in America, is obviously in common use by Americans for lawful purposes. There's tens of millions of these things, countless and countless and countless numbers of semi-automatic rifles. And don't forget that at the historical level where the in common use test arise, you know what I'm about to say, the burden of proof is on the government to show that something is not in common use. Do you hear what I just said? Because the in common use test arises at the historical tradition level, 
of the Bruin text first, burn shifts to the government for the government to show some sort of historical tradition of firearms regulation. The in common use to a test arises from a historical tradition portion of the Bruin test. The burden of proof is on whom? The burden of proof is on the government to show that in AR-15, the semi-automatic rifles are not in common use, and that is simply impossible for them to do. So with that said, this brief on behalf of David Snope, we hope and pray and light candles for him. In this case, this is what we really need the Supreme Court to do. If the Supreme Court takes this case, we are like 99.5% chance going to win this case. It is a clear and easy case for the Supreme Court to resolve in favor of the gun owners, in favor of the Second Amendment. It is what they should do. I just hope they have the fortitude to do the right thing here. I don't control the Supreme Court, but this is what they should do. And I think they know they should do this as to whether or not they will do so. I can't speak to that. With that said, this brief on behalf of David Snope finishes off with a powerful point, And here's the powerful point it makes in their writing to the Supreme Court today. As these examples demonstrate, the efforts by the courts of appeals to find a workaround to the common use test are having a substantial distorting effect on Second Amendment jurisprudence. This court's correction is required to ensure compliance with this Supreme Court's precedence and the proper development of Second Amendment case law. Powerful summary by David Snope's lawyers uh, in the Snope versus Brown case arising out of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit out of Maryland. We need the Supreme Court to grant cert and to resolve this in our favor. This would be a huge win for the Second Amendment community if we can knock out their gun bans of semi-automatic rifles and AR-15s. This would be a terrible blow to the anti-gunners in America, and we need to hope and pray this occurs. Again, there's three things that we, I was cheering for in 2024. Trump had to win the election. That's happened. We had to control the United States Senate to get our judges and justices through. That's occurred. Now we need the third big part of the big time trifecta, and that is for the U.S. Supreme Court in late December, early January to grant cert in the Snope case and declare in June of 2025 that AR-15s and semi-automatic rifles cannot be banned by any of these any of these nutty, nutty, anti-gun blue states like New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Maryland, California, Hawaii, and the like. That is what we need to take our Second Amendment movement to the next level, and to really restore, you heard what I just said, restore the right to keep in our arms to a place where it never should have left. All right, folks, so there you have it. Make sure you follow me on X at Four Boxes Darn. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. Make sure you share it with your friends and talk about it with your friends. And I look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.